welcome to the show. My name is Mike and I like to make a lot of random things. Today, we're gonna to be making a swinging gimbaled cooktop for a sailboat. Now, why would you want a cooktop that swings? Well, on a sailboat, you might be traveling for several hours tipped to the side or, or heeled over as it's called. A swinging gimbaled stove allows you to keep the cook surface level, makes it a lot easier to cook something while you're going. To make this project, we're gonna be using a few things. First and foremost, is this fairly inexpensive cooktop. Now what I like about this is that it uses two different kinds of fuel or, or can use two different kinds of fuel. The first kind is this canned butane fuel and the second kind is this propane. This stove comes with a hose that allows you to connect a propane tank to it. I'm going to be using the butane fuel primarily and I'll explain why in a little bit. But this stove is real easy to use. You just turn it on like this, and away you go. We'll also be using some bookends. You know, these are just meant to keep books on a shelf. This is a piece of high density polyethylene plastic. That's just about the right size for what I want. And some nuts, bolts, and thrust bearings. So the first thing I wanna do for making this is I wanna measure how wide the, the plastic I need, and then I'm going to trim it with a razor knife. I also want to trim how wide it is here, front to back, just so that we can use as little as this plastic as possible. Looks like the size is just about right. If you'll notice these legs right here, we're gonna drill holes down in this plastic so that we can just stick the legs in and it'll stay up. With these feet on the bottom, it's pretty easy to just unscrew each of those feet. And then we'll just be able to position that right where we want it on the plastic and drill through it. And using a special drill bit that allows me to get wider as I go deeper. The idea here is that we're drilling the holes just big enough for the feet of this stove top to fit through. Okay, so you like you can see here, all four feet fit through the holes, but they don't follow the way through it. And that lets us hold it like this without it tipping off. Now let's move on to these bookends. The idea with these bookends is that they will go on each side of the stove top with it resting inside here. And we're gonna raise this inside one just high enough that it can pivot without hitting any of the edges onto the countertop. I've done some measurements, but I want this to be held up as high as possible by the outside bookend so that it has the largest potential for swing as it can. So this is up high. This is about a third to half of the way down. So to connect these two, I have a bolt here. And then I've assembled a, a thrust washer, which is in three parts. Thrust washer just allows an easy rotation along an axis like that. And we'll be putting the inside bookend and a couple of nuts in here. That will allow this to pivot and swing in a pretty frictionless way. Try to center this bracket in the middle of the bracket and in the middle of the board. Top inside the holes. Okay, our next step is going to be to attach these other bookends so that the entire thing can swing. And there we go, we have a stovetop on a gimbal. 
you may have to take a few tries to adjust things so that when there's nothing on the stovetop, it's perfectly level. This one's leaning forward a bit, so I'm going to slide the location where it's attached to these brackets forward just a bit. Here I've adjusted the screws a bit forward. It's a lot more level now. Another trick I plan to do is attach a pipe full of weight to the bottom of this plastic board. When I do that, I could also adjust the weight backwards to help bring it level. Here I'm filling up a tube full of weights. That's probably heavier than that entire stove. And depending on where I attach it at the bottom, that'll help center it up. Here I've used some strong tape to temporarily attach this pipe to find where the good balance point is. And next I'm drilling some holes for screws to attach the weight into there permanently. With the counterweight attached, you can see that it tips backwards without the stove on it. And once I put the stove on it, it looks pretty darn level. It's looking a lot more level, a lot more stable. The counterweight also makes it a lot more stable when you place, for example, a pan of water on there because the weight underneath can help deal with the weight on top. So a couple of ideas for improvement. One, it is a little bit wobbly front to back. So you want to make sure that you can get the most sturdy bookends you can get. One thing that I might do with this leftover plastic is cut a piece that can fit between these two bookends and attach it so that it doesn't, well, so that it stiffens it up a bit. Another thing I'd like to do is make a pot holder, perhaps some aluminum that comes from this side over to this side in kind of a curved shape they can clamp around the pot so that when it tips forward, the pot itself isn't gonna slide forward or back. In fact, something just like this should do the trick. This is just some steel strap that I believe is meant to hold uh, things in your garage. Or... I just bent this around and bolted it into the same spot where we're already connecting the pivot points. And this will ensure that the pan isn't gonna slip any further than that. In fact, if I wanted to go a bit further, I can take advantage of these holes and put a couple nuts and bolts in here to make sure that the pan can't slip sideways either. And I could do this on the front and the back. Keep in mind, you don't have to make a stove like this. You can buy them ready-made. Problem is, well, I see two problems. One, they're about $400 a piece. This stove here cost me about $30, plus the bookends were maybe another 10 and uh, that was a pretty good deal. So for less than $50, I have a a gimbaled stove with a pot holder that works just fine for what I need. The other disadvantage of the one that I see online that I'd probably buy if I were going to buy one is that it uses just the propane tank and so it has a hose that comes out the back and routes down into wherever you're going and hooks to a propane tank and the problem with that is that hose gets in the way a little bit with the swinging action. It uh, doesn't swing as smoothly because that hose puts some resistance to that swing. Well, now it's time to go put it in the boat. All right, well, here's the boat where the stove is gonna go. So the first thing I'll be doing is measuring where I want this pivot point to sit. And then we'll screw in some holes down here, some bolts underneath, and attach the rest of it. Well, that's it for this project for today. I really like the way it came out. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel. We have a lot of things that we build. You never know what's going to show up. See you later.